My name is Tudor Moldovan, and today I'll, I will be talking about the role of the complement system in inflammation. Inflammation is part of the body's immune response of vascular tissues to harmful stimuli, such as pathogens, damaged cells, or irritants. Inflammation helps deliver fluids, proteins, and immune cells from the bloodstream to the site of infection. The benefits of inflammation are that it eliminates the initial cause of cell injury, clears out necrotic cells from the original insult, and promotes repair of the injured tissue. Some forms of inflammation can actually harm the host. There is acute inflammation, found in anaphylactic shock, systemic inflammation, which is found in bacterial sepsis, and chronic inflammation in certain autoimmune diseases such as arthritis. All of these types of inflammation can cause tissue damage and death. In normal healthy tissue, there are several types of immune cells. There are macrophages, which phagocytose pathogens, dendritic cells, which are the link between innate and adaptive immunity, and mast cells, which release inflammatory cytokines during allergic reactions. In blood vessels, there are many components of the complement system, including C1, MBL, and C3. There are also antibodies, neutrophils, and other immune cells present. In the case of an injury, a pathogen can infect the host. Due to the injury, many components of the complement system that were in blood vessels can now access the site of infection. For instance, MBL can recognize specific carbohydrate molecules on the pathogen surface as part of the activation of the lectin pathway. Antibodies can also recognize specific antigens on the pathogen surface, allowing C1 to bind as part of the activation of the classical pathway. C3 will also be present near the pathogen, and upon activation of either the alternative, lectin, or classical pathway, will be cleaved to generate C3B. C3B molecules will be deposited on the pathogen surface, leading to optimization. C3A and C5A, which are pro-inflammatory cytokines, will also be produced. The activation of complement also leads to the formation of the membrane attack complex, which lyses pathogens. All of this has been covered in previous videos. As we saw in the previous slide, once complement is activated, C5A is produced. As has been shown in the video about chemotaxis, C5A is an extremely potent chemoattractant. Macrophages possess a C5A receptor and can bind C5A. Once C5A binds, macrophages will follow the C5A gradient to the pathogen, and the CR1 receptors will bind to C3B. Macrophages also possess PRRs, or pathogen recognition receptors, which bind to PAMPs, or pathogen-associated molecular patterns, on the pathogen. The interaction between PAMPs and PRRs has been covered in other videos. The interaction between PAMPs and PRRs will activate macrophages. Once activated, macrophages will increase their expression of CR1, which is important in recognizing C3B. They will also release pro-inflammatory cytokines, such as IL-1, IL-6, IL-8, also known as CXCL8, IL-12, and TNF-alpha. These cytokines increase vascular permeability to allow components of the complement system and neutrophils to gain access to the site of infection. Activated macrophages will also release reactive oxygen species, which are molecules that cause damage to the pathogen. Finally, activated macrophages can phagocytose pathogens. Without C5A, all of these actions will occur, but at a reduced rate. As you can see, when C5A binds, it greatly enhances these actions and also allows for more efficient phagocytosis and destruction of the pathogen in the phagolysosome. Mast cells also possess a C5A receptor. Upon binding of C5A, mast cells are activated and will release platelet activating factor, or PAF, histamine, and other pro-inflammatory cytokines. These molecules will activate endothelial cells to increase vascular permeability. 
The increase in vascular permeability allows fluid from blood vessels to enter the site of infection, leading to edema. The activation of endothelial cells also aids the chemotaxis of immune cells to the site of infection. The result of all of these actions is inflammation. IL-6 is produced mainly by macrophages during infection and can be released systemically. IL-6 will activate hepatocytes to produce and release several acute phase proteins. One of these is fibrinogen, which participates in coagulation to trap pathogens. Some acute phase proteins are part of the complement system, like MBL. Also, C-reactive protein is produced, which helps in the process of opsonization and classical pathway activation. C-reactive protein is the most important marker for the inflammatory response, such as in bacterial infections. Lastly, serum amyloid protein is produced, which is also an opsonin. Gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria have different cell wall components. Gram-positive bacteria have cell walls made primarily of LTA, or lipotechoic acid, while gram-negative bacteria have cell walls made primarily of LPS, or lipopolysaccharide. LTA and LPS are both considered PAMPs. Macrophages utilize different toll-like receptors to recognize these cell wall components, with TLR2 recognizing LTA and TLR4 recognizing LPS. These TLRs are both considered PRRs. When these components are recognized by macrophages, the macrophages become activated and release inflammatory cytokines such as TNF-alpha, IL-1, and IL-6. The systemic release of these cytokines results in sepsis. During sepsis, vascular leakage can lead to septic shock. Fever and neutrophil activation can also occur. Additionally, sepsis can lead to systemic inflammatory response syndrome or even heart failure. When complement activation occurs, C5A is produced. Both complement activation and C5A may cause disseminated intravascular coagulation, or DIC, which leads to the formation of blood clots that occlude vessels throughout the body. TNF-alpha can also cause DIC. Systemic expression of C5A can therefore also contribute to sepsis. In summary, complement activation, specifically C5A production, has many roles in inflammation. C5A activates macrophages and neutrophils for efficient phagocytosis, participates in chemotaxis, activates mast cells to produce pro-inflammatory cytokines, and is important in systemic inflammation such as sepsis. In addition, we have shown the role of IL-6 as a cytokine capable of promoting the acute phase response, leading to production of MBL, CRP, and other complement proteins during the process of inflammation. Thank you.